Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so right. <laughs> they don't understand if the were, value. If I were a Mensa member, if I were that smart, I would tell everybody that, like, I, I've known Nick Elam for a few years now, and he, he is legitimately, like, one of the smartest people I've ever talked to. Like, the, I, in fact, I went to him after the Elam ending became a thing. It's been a few years now, and asked him how he would fix baseball. Just because he, he worked on the grounds crew for the Cincinnati Reds for a long time. Like, baseball is his number one passion. And he came up with an idea that if it ever got implemented, I think would be incredible for the game. He just explained the dynamic strike zone, right? Yeah. I, I think it's I, great. I love, I love the dynamic strike zone. And let me tell you something. If that were tried at some point in the next year or two in the Atlantic League, it would not surprise me. It's, it's really brilliant because you'd have to swing early in the count. You wouldn't be sitting there exactly. looking for a pitch. Yeah. Exactly. Like, if you want to talk about, uh, listen, we can talk about pitch clocks all we want. Uh, if you want to get the pace of play quicker, have guys swing earlier in the count. And if you are incentivized to swing earlier in the count, it's it's perfect. Like, it is, to me, it is a flawless idea if you have an open mind about baseball. And the, and the fact that it expands as you get deeper in the count and the advantage goes back to the pitcher is incredible. Like, it, it, to me, it's a perfect idea. Now, speaking of flawless, it has not been flawless the way Rob Manfred has handled this. And we've gone back and forth, and Don seems to think that his job could be in jeopardy. I don't think it is in jeopardy. I think his job is to make the owners money. That has not been affected. Do you believe he's in any trouble at all, Jeff? I think your read on the situation, Michael, is perfect. I think until their money is uh, threatened, that they, uh, the owners, his bosses, are going to let Rob Manfred continue doing what he's done, which is grow the game financially. And he's been really, really good at that. Now, you can argue, and I think you can make a fair argument, that the commissioner's job is not just a financial one, but it's to shepherd the game in the right direction. But let me tell you something. Right now, I know this for a fact, right now, the Los Angeles Angels, who are opening their season at home against the Houston Astros, are selling more tickets. I mean, lots more tickets. And you know why? Because Dodgers fans are buying them to go down there and boo the Astros. Major League Baseball now, guys, has a villain. Major League Baseball has this unbelievably beautiful storyline instantaneously built into its season. And the idea that more people are going to be interested in baseball, whether it is for the game being better or because you have these villains out there, there is still interest and there is a, a very compelling, I think, argument to be made that when it's all said and done, the cheating scandal is going to have been good for baseball. Uh, that sounds horrible to say. It does. It, like, it makes, it weirds me out saying that, right. but I, I think it's Jeff, true. I, I, I think... Because Michael's have the same opinion, Jeff. I, I think that's kind of wishful thinking. Number one, I'm not sure how sustainable it is because eventually it's just going to go away because baseball's not going to allow it to happen. You know, because right. it comes down to I'm going to, like, like June 2nd, they come to City Field. You know, if Jacob DeGrom's pitching, you know, I don't, I don't need him getting thrown out in the second inning because he pitched inside. Warnings are going to be issued right away. Baseball's going to be right on top of this. So, yeah, first game of series. It'll go on for a little while. Eventually, it'll just peter itself out, and we'll get back into the, the, the nuts and bolts of the baseball. But even during the controversies with football, with the deflate gate and with spy gate, I never heard football fans saying, I'm done with the sport. I'm hearing a lot about that. You know, with baseball fans, now, I don't know if they're telling the truth or not, but yeah, I think there's just as much I, a possibility. Listen, you got to be honest, Jeff. People, a lot of people are on the fence about the sport, that the game is a little bit too slow. Yeah, they're flush with yep. cash, but attendance has been ticking down. You know, you yep. don't want to tick off the guy that's waiting for a reason to walk away from the game. So I think it's very much up in the air. And if it does go further downward, it's, it's easy to bang the commissioner, right? I mean, it's easy, if he loses the owners, and if these players are upset, I'm sure owners are upset, too. I'm sure the Steinbrenners are not happy with him. I'm sure Dodger ownership Ooh. is not happy with him. Nope. So no, I, if you end up I, losing I think, the right that, owner, you that, can end up being out of a job. Yeah, I think, I think that you make some, some very fair points in there. I will say this. What we're talking about with fans saying, I'm done with baseball, it's just anecdotal. And, and you know what's also anecdotal? Uh, the, the water cooler conversations that are happening right now where people are talking about baseball and the non-baseball fans who uh, at parties are saying, hey, wh what's with this Astros thing? And are showing more interest in baseball 
Now, again, in a controversy, but in something tangentially related to baseball than they have in years. And, and to me, uh, the sign-stealing scandal is almost a gateway drug into the game. And, and the thing that could, again, turn them off is the fact that the game right now just isn't what it can and should be. The game is slow. The game does have too many strikeouts. The game has all of these great athletes who I believe are better at actually playing baseball than anybody in history. And that is no disrespect to Ted Williams, no disrespect to Mickey Mantle, Babe Ruth, Henry Aaron, all of the greats of the past. But I think if you were to throw them into the game right now, it would take them a year to figure out how to help hit pitches that are, uh, you know, 93-mile-per-hour sliders. Like, nobody threw 93-mile-per-hour fastballs outside of Walter Johnson and Bob Feller. There were a handful of guys who were throwing in the mid-'90s back when, you know, the golden era players were playing. Now everybody is throwing that hard. So the game itself, the athletes who are playing it, are better than they've ever been. Maybe you fall in love with that, watching it just one time so you can see these damn Astros. Now, th there's something I think that is a, a real problem with this, though, Jeff. As long as I've been covering this sport 35 years now, I have never seen big-time athletes go on the record and destroy yep. other athletes. Yep. I, I think that's yep. an issue. I mean, Manford has to do something about it because that's not a good look. Have you ever seen this in your time covering the sport? Uh, I'm coming up on 20 years now, and I haven't seen anything anywhere close to this. Let's flash back to Alex Rodriguez, guys, when he was uh, trying to get his 162-game suspension overturned. Alex Rodriguez, now, I understand it was an individual decision to use performance-enhancing drugs, but Alex Rodriguez... Uh, was not getting slimed in the public at all. And he very easily could have been by players out there who did think ill of him, but they bit their tongues. Uh, no one's biting his tongue right now. And that is, I think that's something, Michael, that even Major League Baseball didn't anticipate when they went out and did this. I think, you know, on January 13th when Rob Manfred issued his report, the vitriol was not nearly what it is now, but over the last month, uh, something's happened. I think I think players have uh, I think players have looked at at the whole of this thing and seen the Astros' response to it and found it entirely insufficient. And and having been here in West Palm Beach for the last eleven days, having spoken one on one with most of the Astros players who were there in 2017, I can tell you right now. Uh, they have been punished. They haven't been suspended. But the punishment of knowing that your professional reputation, uh, if not ruined, is at least tarnished, that your peers whose respect matters to you as an athlete more than anything now think nothing more of you than you're a cheater, that is something that you will carry for the rest of your life. So the idea that they've gone without punishment, I just don't buy that. Well, no. I mean, but they have. And, and one thing I wanted to bring up, uh, every stand-up you do has to be in front of that 2017 World Championship sign. That's number one. And number two, why isn't that title taken away? Forget about punishing the players. Why should they be allowed to call themselves champions? Why? Number one, blame my producer, Sean Fitzgerald, for that. He's a good uh, man. He's a great man. He's the best. Uh, 1A, uh, of course, Olbermann, of all people, was in my ear yesterday before the live shot telling me to lift my left arm <laughs> so I could put it over the sign of the 2017 world champion. Like, he was the devil on my shoulder. <laughs> Literally. And, and number number two, uh, why haven't they done it yet? I, <laughs> you know, uh, early on, I think we had a conversation about this where I laid out the argument why you can't strip uh, or why you shouldn't strip a team of its title. Have you changed and your mind? Um, I'm thinking a lot more about it now yeah. than I have. And, and, here's the, and here's the thing. Like, I, I am okay changing my position on something if I feel like there's compelling evidence out there to change it. I don't feel like I'm being a flip-flopper. I feel like my, my position is never intransigent and in that I want to evolve as, as the facts reveal themselves uh, more. And, and the truth of the matter is I can see an argument for doing that now. I really can. I've talked with enough people enough people who I respect, enough people who I think are really smart and thoughtful who believe that to be the case. And if there are smart, thoughtful people out there who believe this, then at very least I need to reconsider my position. I'm not there yet, 
but uh, I could find myself getting there at some point. Absolutely. Now, we've heard from Manfred. I, I think he should be done as far as, you know, defending himself and defending uh, the ruling. We've heard from the players. He's, talk the he's talking again tonight, by the way. Well, I think if that's another why? probably another a mistake. Well. He does, he, you know, he does two uh, two media availabilities this spring, okay. one in Florida and one in Arizona. I think Arizona won it this afternoon, and uh, I I trust in my media brethren out there that they're going to ask right. a different set of questions, and okay. one that continues to push this so, story along. So, so we will hear more from him today. All right, he continues to talk. The players continue to talk. Don't you think it's time for Tony Clark to speak? Well, Mr. LaGreca, tomorrow... He may or may not be at New York Mets camp having a union meeting with the Mets. So I believe that we are going to hear from Tony Clark tomorrow. See, that, that, and, that's... And, and, I'm and I'm curious. I'm curious, Don. What question or questions do you think we should be asked? Well, I, I think what should be asked is you have your players red hot at the few that the perception is you're protecting. Because... Mm -hmm. You know, Manfred said part of the reason he didn't go after the players is because it wouldn't have worked anyway. The, the, the Players Association would have appealed it. I wouldn't have had a leg to stand on as far as trying to discipline the players. Well, Tony yep. Clark's got an opportunity to answer to that. And, and what does he plan on doing in the future if something like this happens? Because remember, they yep. waived it for the PEDs, right? Because the, yep. The, yep. the many overshadowed the few. He's got the same situation here where the majority of his players are upset. So I'd like to hear what he plans on doing. Would he talk to, to Manfred? Would he waive, you know, appealing if he tried to go after the players if ever the 2019 investigation was reopened, which I think there is enough evidence, Jeff, that maybe the commissioner could reopen 2019 with the buzzers. That's where I want to know is how far is he willing to defend the few at the expense of the many? Okay, so there are a few points here to be made, and, and I want you to think about this, and I want to give you some time to think about it, because I don't know that you got a good answer for this, but I would love to know what sort of evidence you believe is out there. And don't answer the show. Let me finish, finish my answer. But what sort of evidence do you believe is out there that, that proves uh, the investigation should be reopened to look into the buzzers? Now, getting to your earlier point about standing up for the players, the union has a legal obligation to stand up for its members and to fight for them. And as much as in his heart, Tony Clark, especially the former player, may believe that what the Astros did was completely beyond reproach, the union would cease to exist the moment it does not fight for the players. So it has to do that, and that's part and parcel with this whole thing. Now, let's get back to the buzzers. What do you know, Don LaGreca, that I don't? Because long before John Boy went and posted about buzzers, uh, myself and other reporters at ESPN were looking into them, trying to find evidence, and just did not find anything substantive enough to print. But what, what I do find curious is when the John Boy stuff came out and the commissioner yep. was asked about it, he said, we are already an investigate. It was already part of our investigation, and we didn't find right. anything. Yes. Now, would that have been the stance, w like, well after, as more and more videos started to oh, pour oh, out? And, oh, and Don, that Don, I can, I, can, I, can tell you, I can tell you right now, uh, I, I know this for a fact. Every player uh, from the 2019 Astros who was interviewed was asked about buzzers. Like, they, they were asked about specifically buzzing Band-Aids. Now, maybe, I, I take that back. I don't know if it was specifically said, were there buzzing Band-Aids, was there wearable technology. I don't know how it was phrased, but... Well, that's important, uh, though, I, right, from it, the it semantics is, it of is. it, because it, it might not have been a buzzer, it might have been something else, and I'm technically not lying because it wasn't a buzzer. I mean, because... Yes. And, here's, and, and here's the thing, the, the lawyers at Major League Baseball are a lot smarter than mm -hmm. anyone on this phone call and probably smarter than Nick Elam, too. And so uh, the idea that they would ask a question as narrowly as that uh, is probably not real. Yeah, I think if you make it as widespread okay. as wearable technology, that would make a lot of sense. Now, they were given immunity, right? So even if they, they had were answered... Given immunity in, they were given immunity in exchange for truthful testimony. If they are found at any point to have lied to major league investigators, I, I offer you the case of John Coppola. My, you know, the majority of people listening probably don't know who he is. He was the general manager of the Atlanta Braves. Back when he was GM, uh, they ran afoul of international signing rules mm -hmm. by packaging bonuses. 
Now, this is something that under normal circumstances probably would have led to a one-year suspension, but John Coppola lied to Major League Baseball about it, and now he uh, has joined true with Joe Jackson uh, and Pete Rose on the band list. He is gone from baseball. So uh, the idea that the, the Astros players, if they were lying about this, right, but would, uh, would, not ha would not be suspended, they will get suspensions and they will get long suspensions if their testimony is proven to be untrue. But there's also the conspiracy theorist in me that believes that the players could have been protected because how, what percentages are we working with? Is it 50% immunity so we can get information or 50% I don't want to. I don't want to bust the players because I can't. I can't do anything with them anyway because the players' association is going to appeal it, and I can't suspend them anyway. So it's convenient to talk about immunity when you weren't going to be able to right. bang them anyway. So but if here's he the thing. The, here, here, here's the thing, Don. They, they they were they were granted immunity because of the lack of notice. Now that is a legal tenant in labor law that okay. says that if if something changes in your disciplinary track, you must be informed of it in order to receive it. Players were never informed of that because neither Jeff Luno nor A.J. Hinch, who were tasked with doing that, told that to players. Now, On now, the other hand, in this case, let me just finish. In okay. this case, what would happen is they would be disciplined for lying to the commissioner. That is something that is not covered by lack of notice. And thus, the Major League Baseball Players Association would have an impossible time okay. trying to get that suspension overturned. Now, you mentioned the legality of having to protect any player in your players association if you're Tony Clark, okay? Yep. They did have some sort of wavering of that during the PED scandal where you're now allowed to suspend somebody for a full year or ban them from baseball because the players association yeah, understood. That, but, no, no, but Don, that was that was a collectively bargained right. uh, disciplinary track. That's no, something I, that the players association and Major League Baseball agreed on. Which is also something that's coming up. My point is, is that Manfred could still go to Tony Clark. Something can still be worked out here where at least Tony Clark is protecting the many. I mean, he's got players going on record, and also some players, Jeff, going on record assuming that they wore buzzers in 2019. That's already been talked about, too. So it's all the court of public perception. So we don't live in the, in the real world here. We're living in the baseball world where the court of public opinion still matters, and you've got players just assuming on record that they wore buzzers yep. in 2019. So I think Tony Clark can soothe this by the Players Association and the uh, commissioner to get together to at least allow in the future disciplining players who cheat i can tell you right now that is already happening one final thing i think rob manford is very bright why would he make a comment piece of metal how could he be that tone deaf um i i think the this is an unsatisfactory answer michael so so please uh like please understand that preface mm -hmm. uh he screwed up yeah. <laughs> like, because even extremely bright men, Rob Manfred is is five times smarter on his dumbest day than I am on my best. Even extremely bright people say stupid things sometimes, and he just said a stupid thing. That's I mean that's that's all. Yeah. And I think I think he knows that, and I think he admits that, and I'm I'm sure that that he looks at that and says, God, did I make a mistake there? Because. The last, you know, the last thing that you want to do here is is be flip or or be condescending, and uh, that that to players and and to fans was just insulting. And it was, you know, I, I it's unfortunate. Like, it, but but at the same time, the man is paid extremely well, and uh, it has a job to lead baseball in the right direction. So you have to be, you know, I I was there that morning when he was talking with Carl Ravitch, talked to him for forty five minutes. I thought Ravi was incredible in that interview there were no softballs there he went right at him and you know what when you are getting grilled for 45 minutes to be on the entire time i'm sure you guys go home every day and say god i wish i wouldn't have said that in the second hour god I, why did i do that i screwed that opportunity up and we have a chance to to make our mistakes better the next day rob manfred at this point with as much scrutiny as on him has no chance to fix his mistakes and just has to wear them in 10 seconds, do you think that Manfred will reconsider and take away their championship? Will he reconsider it? Absolutely. I just don't know at this point if he's willing to go and take it away. And I will try and be as quick here as possible. Mm -hmm. Here, I think, is the calculus. 
Will taking away the championship, Michael, be enough to satisfy the bloodlust of the public? And further beyond that, is satisfying the bloodlust of the public a proper reason to do something as, no. as big as taking away a championship? No, not, not the public, though, Jeff. The players. The players are upset that they're getting away scot-free. Not the public. Forget about the public. The players. Aaron no, Judge, both. Uh, Cody it's, Bellinger. It's both, Michael. You, you, you can't, you're, you're right about the players, but you can't forget about the public because ultimately the public's judgment is what is going to shape the narrative. Okay, but I, I think that when star players do something that they never do, that, that should be noted. Yeah, uh, totally. 100% correct. Good stuff, Jeff. Uh, enjoy that sign again. <laughs> Take it easy, boys. All right, thanks a lot.